People who have to use their voices continuously could develop throat polyps, sometimes compared to a blister. We spoke with Dr. Andrew Floria at Redlands Community Hospital and asked him to explain the causes and treatments for throat polyps. A polyp of the vocal cord is a mid-membranous, so it's in the middle part of the vocal cord, a lesion that's very, very superficial. Because it's superficial, it doesn't really impact the mucosal wave or the vibration of the vocal cord. If it's large, however, or even, even when it's small, it can impair the closure of the vocal cords together, which ultimately will result in a hoarse, raspy voice. Anyone can have a voice problem. When should they seek medical attention? Voice problems can come to any person for a variety of reasons at any time. People can have paralysis of their vocal cords, and that can be from a viral, uh, a viral cause or after a cold or an upper respiratory tract infection or even after routine surgery. Sometimes the breathing tube damages the vocal cord or the nerve that innervates the vocal cord. Uh, on top of that, people as they mature in age, their vocal cords thin out. So we talk about elderly person's voice, which is really a thinning of the vocal cord or vocal cord atrophy. You can also have inflammation and viruses and colds that directly cause swelling of the vocal cords too. Uh, overuse of the voice is a very common problem of a voice problem. So when does uh, a problem become a problem that you should evaluate or have somebody look at? Uh, basically a problem that doesn't go away after a few days, a problem that comes on right after surgery, a problem that's been getting worse or has been persistent for some time, um, a problem that's not limited in nature uh, to just a few days. When we talk about polyps and smokers, what we usually mean is a condition called Reinke's edema, and that's a accumulation of the same gelatinous material underneath the superficial part of the vocal cord, but to the point where it really causes a very raspy, hoarse smoker's voice. The number one concern for smokers is that they have a change on the skin itself, on that mucosa itself, because those changes in smokers are very worrisome for being cancerous lesions or precancerous lesions. We asked Dr. Floria about vocal cord lesion. Benign vocal cord lesions, of which polyps are one category, one type of a benign vocal cord lesion, come in all shapes, flavors, and sizes. And we usually we try to characterize the lesions by several things. First of all, where are they located in the vocal cord? Are they very superficial? Oftentimes, if they're very superficial, um, and depending on what they are, like a polyp, they will improve or a nodule. Nodules, for example, will improve with voice therapy. Polyps oftentimes don't improve with voice therapy and they require surgical excision. There are other benign vocal cord lesions too, similar to polyps and nodules, like cysts and fibrous masses. Usually cysts and fibrous masses won't improve or go away on their own with voice therapy or voice rest and require surgical excision. If those lesions are deep in the vocal cord, what we call right on the vocal cord uh, membrane or right on top of the muscle, uh, what happens is, is that when you excise them, uh, your body will produce scar tissue in that area, which will impair the vibration of the mucosal wave or the vibration of the vocal cord, um, which will ultimately uh, lead to a longer recovery time and possibly not as good of a recovery from a surgical excision as a superficial lesion. Dr. Floria gave us his best advice for someone with vocal problems. I would say that if you have a, a significant voice problem, first and foremost, you should go see an ear, nose, and throat doctor, an otolaryngologist, but preferably a laryngologist, one that has additional fellowship training in voice and swallowing disorders.